Uh, we want to welcome you, Bill. Uh, Bill de Blasio, Mayor of New York, to Jerusalem. We're honored and pleased to host you here in Jerusalem, our capital city, the holy city, the holiest city in the world. Your decision to come to our city now, especially during these challenging times, when Israel and Jerusalem are experiencing a cruel wave of terror that targets, as you saw, innocent civilians, is an, an expression of true friendship and solidarity between residents of New York and the people of America and Jerusalem and the people of Israel. Mayor de Blasio and I just visited victim, victims recently uh, uh, attacked in this round of violence. And we met Maria, a Christian lady that raised 20 Arab kids in her life, living in the old city. And Pesach, who was just uh, waiting for a bus to go to a doctor. And the family of Richard, who was stabbed on the bus and is in critical situation. Wonderful people that all they did is walk the streets of Jerusalem. I believe that you in New York understand because you also went through a round of violence in September 11 and we almost re realize that the source of hatred, the source of terror is similar around the world and it is our duty to fight not only the terrorists but the people inciting terror and causing people to go and create terror attacks. There's no doubt in my mind that uh, when we meet in heavy occasions, we will look back at this point that we're together and remember and cherish your visit here at this point in the city of Jerusalem. Welcome, and may we see you next year in Yerushalayim. Thank you so much, Sandro. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Barkat. I appreciate your kindness and the great relationship that we have developed and the fact that our cities are so Quark City. We feel extraordinary closeness. Our people, by blood, by history, feel such a connection. And so when you are going through pain, we feel pain too. When you're under attack, we feel under attack too. And I'm honored to be here in that spirit of solidarity and a sense of common destiny. Um, I want to say, first of all, let me, let me offer my thanks to everyone at Hadassah Hospital. And I have to tell you, the stories I've heard are in the midst of this pain, in the midst of this challenge, can only be described as inspiring and somehow life-affirming. And it's a hard uh, thing to imagine at this difficult moment, but uh, what's happening here reminds us of what should be and will be one day. I want to thank Dr. Tamar Peretz, the director of this fine hospital. I want to thank Dr. Alon Pekarski, the head of surgery. They are extraordinary doctors uh, dealing with one of the most dynamic uh, situations, I'd argue, anywhere in the world. And um, to hear them talk about their mission uh, is inspiring. It's far beyond a medical mission. Uh, they're serving people throughout one crisis after another. They understand that this hospital is one of the guarantors of uh, something positive in this society. And there's such a commitment here to serving all and uh, to being a place where people of goodwill come together to help others. And that's the amazing story of Hadassah. The staff here, the doctors, the nurses, the staff come from the Jewish community, come from the Muslim community, work together to save lives. So even again, amidst this pain, there is a reminder of something better. Uh, it's also so stark today. It, you don't have to uh, think about, you can't think about acts of terrorism like this in the abstract when you meet the victims, when you meet their families. It becomes very real. And in New York City, as you said, uh, Nir, we, we know too much about the effects of terror. And even just a few weeks ago, with our anniversary again, reminded what the cost of terror is in human terms. Well, today we saw three families deeply affected by these acts of terror. And we understand that any act of violence against a civilian is unacceptable. 
and we have to condemn it and we have to fight to stop it because there can't be peace when civilians are wantonly attacked just for going about their business. The, the victims we met, I wish I could express to you fully how extraordinary their stories are and how extraordinary their spirits are. Three entirely different people, two victims and the wife of another, each with an amazing story and each with somehow a positive spirit despite what they've been through. And you heard about Maria Veldman, who came from Holland, a Christian woman from Holland who came here, worked as a nurse at your Mount Scopus Hospital of Hadassah, uh, became devoted to the notion that she would help uh, Arab children who didn't have a home, and proceeded to become a foster parent for 20 Arab children over the years, one of whom was uh, visiting her in the room when we went. And, um, and she talked about the fact that no matter what she has been through, she still feels a love for all people and that she looks forward to continuing her work. And here's someone who you could see their stab wound on her, stab wound on her chest. And instead of talking about anger or hatred, she talked about love and her desire to resume her mission. When we talked with Pesach Krzyzewski, as man who some of you saw had gone through such a horrible injury and come so close to death. And yet he was joyful to be alive and offered a positive hope for both our peoples. And then finally, Karen Lakin, the wife of Richard Lakin. They're originally from New York. Uh, she grew up in the Bronx, I believe she said, but they lived in Port Chester before they returned and, and made return to Israel. She, it turns out, was a teacher in the very same program that we visited this afternoon and worked with those schools hand in hand. And even more amazingly, and I, I thought as I was listening to her that you couldn't believe that all this history could come together in one place. She and her husband were freedom writers during the civil rights era in 1961. So imagine this couple that had devoted themselves to a, a better and more free and more inclusive America, then made Aliyah here, devoted themselves to helping the children of Israel, all children of all backgrounds, and then this horrible terrorist attack, and yet her spirit remained undaunted. So I just will conclude by saying what we've seen here in uh, the spirit and the resolve of these victims and the strength of the leadership here in Jerusalem in the amazing work of the leaders and the staff of Hadassah Hospital, somehow amidst this pain there is still hope. And uh, our prayers are with all of the victims and their families. Uh, this violence must end. And uh, today reminds me that uh, when the violence does end, there are good people who will move forward and help this society move forward towards peace. Thank you, everyone, very much. Thank you very much, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.